All righty. How are we on volume? Everybody can hear me? Okay. I know it's the last talk of the day, so I'm going to keep this really short. Okay? Ready? TDD is dead. All right. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I've heard this a lot, actually, whenever I talked about TDD. Um, and it, I think it's pretty funny because uh, two or three people actually told me this yesterday when I told them my talk was on TDD for infrastructure. Uh, there's the reference to the TDD is dead phrase. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about TDD not being dead. We're reviving it just a little bit for infrastructure, but with conditions. Okay, so it's not fully dead. So, you know, it's not that short. Sorry. All right, so for those who are not familiar with test-driven development, it's a practice. It's a software development practice. The idea is that you write the tests first, then you write code for the feature. Seems pretty simple. I mean, the pattern is red, so you write a red test, meaning it's failing. You try to get it green by implementing the functional logic, and then you refactor it so that it's wonderful. The idea behind TDD is that you might actually think about building additional features if you're not doing it. So TDD focuses on specifically building defined features. The other benefit, which isn't actually backed with any metrics to be honest, but the idea is that it builds some modular, some more testable code. At least for me personally, when I started to do TDD for software development, I was actually better able to understand the concept of abstractions and how things could be interfacing with each other. So the idea was that I actually made more testable code by doing TDD first because I didn't know anything about testing because I started as a sysadmin. Yeah, okay, I, I love the cheers. Okay, so in testing, right, in testing in general, there's this ideal testing pyramid. It looks like a pyramid, wow. So it, at the bottom you have unit tests and those are the ones that check your logic, and then you move up the pyramid. The idea is that as you move up the pyramid, the cost increases in terms of time and money, including manual testing, which is a lovely cloud at the top. And uh, to be honest, infrastructure is more like a signpost to me personally. I know someone told me that infrastructure testing was like an ice cream cone. There's no ice cream cone. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's more like this, like a signpost, right? We do a lot of end-to-end -end tests, and we do a lot of manual tests. And that's great, except it costs time and it costs money. And to be honest, it also costs environments, right? So you have to have a staging environment. You have to have three or four dev QA, and hopefully you've spun up a mock of your production that's exactly like production, right? No, that's not, that's not what happens. Okay, so the infrastructure testing signpost is real. Uh, and why is it a signpost? Well, as I pointed out, we do YOLO-driven development. This is not my phrase, this is my teammate's phrase who literally says YOLO-driven development. So they'll make a Terraform code change, or for example, push it and say Terraform YOLO. Okay, that's how Terraform YOLO-driven development works, which is kind of what we do sometimes. Um, sometimes it's just a lack of education. Infrastructure testing is hard, and no one really talks about it, right? Because it's just really difficult. And part of this might be because there's a lack of automation or interfacing. I also started in the network space, and that also has some difficulties too. You don't always find an interface for everything. The other piece of it is lack of tooling. There aren't always tools to help you do testing for infrastructure. And this is maybe more in the case of data center, but sometimes it's also kind of ranging into the public cloud space as well. So it's the signpost. Let's be real with ourselves. <laughs> And so in this session, we're going to try TDD for infrastructure. I'm going to show you what it kind of looks like. We're going to get really close. Because here's the thing. You've heard today, and I'll reiterate it again, infrastructure configuration still requires good code practices. You should not be Terraform yellowing. It's not a thing, okay? Don't, you know, and it's not just Terraform. Just don't like insert a deploy command and just say, oh, I'm just going to push it and see what happens. That's, that's not what you should be doing. Infrastructure architecture also has a really interesting definition of feature complete. When you think about an infrastructure architecture, it tends to have all the things you generally need in the infrastructure architecture, right? So that's kind of testable in a weird way. So let's actually try test-driven development. Let's red, green, and refactor. So here's our target state, okay? This seems really simple, and it is. I'm doing it in AWS. AWS Frankfurt, please work. Uh, so it's an ELB and a public subnet, a private subnet. There's an application on an EC2 instance and a database on an EC2 instance. What's really interesting to note is that I have denoted the ports by which the inbound connections should interface with each other. Port 80 on the ELB and 8099 
on the public subnet. That's to my application, right? And then my database is Mongo. It's 27017. It's not, not Mongo is not really the, the important part. It's the port. So I want to isolate and secure this environment. So cool. I also have the VPC CIDR blocks, and I also have the subnet CIDR blocks outlined too. Great. So we're going to TDD our way up the pyramid, with the exception of manual tests and end-to-end -to -end -to -end tests, because it takes time, and I only have 40 minutes. So we're not going to do end-to-end -end and manual tests, but I'm going to show you a little bit of the unit, contract, and integration testing, OK? So the idea is that maybe we should have a lot of unit tests, a little bit fewer contract tests, and a little bit fewer integration tests. All right, there's some Terraform. Don't worry, it's not that bad. It's not going to be too complicated. There is AWS in here. But it is more important to think about the pattern and less about the language and less about the tool, OK? So if you have difficulty following on the screen up here, because I do know that code is sometimes hard to see, you can follow along at my VS Code live share at hashi.co slash TDD velocity. This will pull up a VS Code live share for you, and you can actually watch me type and do the terminal stuff. So I'll pause for a second for those who want to join. It's just TDD dash velocity, you know, because we're sitting in this room and we're talking about TDD at velocity. All right, going to proceed. All right, ready? Unit testing. Unit tests test individual components. This is functional logic encapsulated in one single place. The idea is that you should be able to run a unit test without dependencies, which is really hard. In infrastructure, you have dependencies everywhere. You have a public cloud, for example. Uh, so it's really difficult. And so in infrastructure, maybe like the best you could get or the closest you could get is checking specific configuration and syntax. So here's how you might be able to do it. Keep in mind, this is not something required for you to use. Uh, I am going to demonstrate using ConfTest, which is actually a wrapper around open policy agent rego language. It's a lot of babble, but open policy agent is a CNCF tool. Uh, and ConfTest is wrapping around that. So FYI, that's what we're using today. And we'll use Terraform Validate, which is pretty cool. Um, Peter Soder, another HashiCorporeal, has uh, compiled also some other Terraform-specific tools in the unit testing space, including Clarity, Terraform Compliance, Terraform Validate, and other infrastructure also has some more native testing frameworks. So let's actually talk about unit testing, right? All right, so here's the code. So what we have here is this lovely subnet.tf. We're going to close that because this is TDD. We're going to do red, green, refactor, remember? All right, so I'm going to make a unit test. Ah, that's red. Whoops. All right, so what exactly is going on in here? Well, I'm going to click my failing uh, test, which is here, this test unit subnet rego. So I'm going to actually go to the subnet right here. And as you can see, what it's saying in the test which if I pulled it up, then we're going to pull it up. It says, define private subnet. Well, my subnet is apparently not defined, which in this case, for some peculiar reason, subnet rego is apparently defined. Hold on. Uh, OK. All right, here we go. So in the subnet here, right, this is my Terraform file. I only see public. I see no private. Private has apparently disappeared. Huh, that's interesting. Notice that the test is descriptive. It tells me that, hey, private subnet resource isn't defined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what every infrastructure engineer loves to do, copy paste. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to copy paste and I'm going to yellow. I'm not yellowing, I'm doing test-driven development, so you know. Uh, so I'm going to just go down here, I'm going to paste, I'm going to put private subnet, cool. All right, so if I run the test again, oh, well that's lovely, hold on. All right, if I run the test again, sorry, live demo, like I said. All right, when I run the test again, notice the private subnet block is not private. Hmm, that's not right, right? Uh, the private subnet is also missing a tag, which isn't good either. So let's actually take a look at what's going on here. First of all, it said the public, uh, the private subnet block was, well, public. Uh, what does that mean? Map public IP on launch. That means it becomes a public subnet. That's not what we want, so we're going to go false, right? All right. And then the other thing was that the tags apparently isn't right, but I see a name tag. This doesn't make any sense. Why? All right, so I'm going to actually go to the subnet test right now. 
So this is rego language. This is the open policy agent kind of language around it. Uh, and we're, we're grossly misappropriating it uh, as assert statements. So deny means assert. Sorry, everybody. It's a little confusing. But what you see here is that I'm actually checking if it doesn't match name dot, dot star private, that regular expression, it means I failed the test. So it's expecting the name tag to have private in it, right? And these are tests that I've written, right, to say, hey, check this, check this resource here. Now what's really interesting is I'm not calling out to AWS in this. All I'm doing is looking at my Terraform files. Now you're saying, oh, resume unit testing, a little useless, right? But the really interesting piece about this is that it's very useful when you're trying to teach someone these public cloud constructs, right? No one's gonna know what a private subnet is, and if they accidentally delete it, right, and you run it through your pipeline, then YOLO, you've deleted a private subnet. Great job. So the idea is here that I'm checking selectively for all of these things, right? So that's a unit test. And so really, it's not terribly difficult. It's kind of like a combination of weird tools that we're grossly misappropriating for things, but we can accomplish it. We're checking it against Terraform, and we're not using external dependencies. So that's a plus. So, TDD, unit TDD. We get some really fast feedback. I did this in a minute, two minutes. Um, I, we're checking for architectural conformance. What's really cool about that is that I can say I want a private subnet. I, granted, Terraform is declarative, so this might be a little redundant, but the point is that for someone who may not know better, they're like, oh, I'll just you know, do something or whatever. I'm checking for tags, I'm checking for names, I'm checking to make sure there's standardization. So in some ways, it's a bit like a lint and check syntax. And also, as part of my unit testing, I run Terraform Validate just to make sure all of the dependencies are wired up correctly between them. Now, here's the problem, though. All of the unit TDD stuff that we just did checks against the Terraform files. So we don't actually check any functional logic. If you're using functions that interpolate things, like, for example, a site or subnet, this isn't checking it. We don't actually know if our site or subnet is correct because we don't know any networking, right? So execution is not there. We don't actually know if this executes to completion, and our resource dependencies aren't really well understood in this. So in some cases, it's really a true unit test in TDD in which we don't actually know what's going on, but we do kind of know that logically some things are checked, right? All right, so contract testing. This one is borrowed a little bit more from the microservices space, although there are contract tests for things that are not microservices, right? Contract tests validate interactions between two components. It's input and output validation. In microservices space, you want to validate the input of API, expected input of API with the actual output of said API, right? You want to make sure that that contract is not broken. Uh, it's a little bit like a smart contract in the, in the, I believe, blockchain space. Anyway, so real resources are not required in this, or they shouldn't really be. You can get away with mocking contract tests. But here's the trick with infrastructure. Infrastructure contract tests are really about state. Follow with me, okay? So when you generate state and infrastructure, that's maybe current infrastructure, but you also have the new kind of dry run state. And in that case, that's a little bit like contract. You have things within the new dry run state that have expected inputs and expected outputs. Hmm, very loose association with contract tests here. But the idea is that we'll also use conf tests again. It applies again, but what we're going to do instead is look at the Terraform plan output, which is more reflective of dry run state, okay? So this means we will have to run Terraform plan, which means we do have to interface with AWS. So you will see me uh, try to log into AWS from here. Don't spill my secrets. All right, Terraform specific tools are Kitchen Terraform as well. I also have a couple of things that I've written for native testing frameworks for other things that are not AWS. So network switches I've tested with Python for contract testing, S3 bucket policy with Golang, uh, and Kubernetes, you would do some checks between Kubernetes and external components, right? So let's go back to this target state and let's actually do some contract testing, shall we? Okay, so we have a couple of these here. And what we're going to do is basically run the contract tests. Make contract. By the way, I have them all in make files. So if you want to run this on your own, uh, I recommend you take a look and examine what is going on in the make files. So it looks like, first of all, I've got an issue. I've got duplicate public subnets. So let me just clean that up. That's a break in contract. So that's actually a make plan. So let me actually push this back up. So what you're actually going to notice is that Terraform is running a plan and it's outputting it to a TF plan file. There is this tf plan json 
by the way, that you can actually write out. And what this will do is actually dump out planned changes. It's just a JSON with a list of planned changes, right? Really cool. So once you do this thing, then you can actually check the JSON for specific values. Now, remember when I said we didn't check that CIDR block and we don't know anything about networking? Who knows CIDR, address, CIDR and IP addressing off the top of their head immediately? Okay, kind of, yeah. See, you kind of have a question about whether or not it's working. And here Terraform has this lovely CIDR block, CIDR subnet uh, function that you can use to interpolate it for you. But what are these values and did I actually input them correctly? Clearly not, because it's failing, right? So let's actually take a look at the file that's uh, associated with the contract test. So in my contract test, I'm gonna look at my logic files. And what it's actually going to tell me is, hey, I'm going to check if the CIDR block is what I expect it to be. Now this is just JSON. So it's what, what it's doing is looking for a private, key, the subnet private key into the JSON and saying, is it the expected output? Which by the way, I'm doing dot 32. Clearly it's not because it's 0028, so nope, that's not right. And so if I go back and I say, all right, let me just fix it. Is it one? You know, best guess, right? It's gotta be one, right? Uh, and then it's going to check, it's going to regenerate the plan of plan changes, it's going to output it, and still tell me it's wrong because turns out it's the second address space in that subnet. So what I'm gonna actually now have is a lovely passing contract test, right? So why does this work and why do I think this is a contract test to a certain degree? Well, you are inputting certain parameters into this function. You're not testing if this function works. We know it works because otherwise why would it have been released in the binary? But it works, but we don't know if we put it in correctly. So this is a way for us to determine if some of the things we do have worked, right? Now I'm gonna run a make apply uh, slash Terraform YOLO. Uh, just ignore that for now because I'm gonna show you another piece of contract testing that's important. So, oops. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna say yes because yeah, we live dangerously. Uh, all right, so here we go. Contract test TDD. Let's think about this for a second. Pretty fast feedback. Terraform plan didn't take that long to run. Granted, you know, yes, I needed some other resource dependency on AWS. I needed to know what was going on in AWS, so I need to call out to it. I checked my functional logic, I caught my input errors, it seems pretty cool. It's a little bit more holistic in nature. So let's actually think about this whole more holistic thing, right? So the interesting thing that you can do is that if you're checking against your plan contract, right, the plan state output, what's really cool about this is that you can actually check if resources have violated some kind of contract that you've put. So that's a really interesting concept. So I've created, a, I've, at this point, I've created a database, right? So that's pretty cool. But let's say I like, you know, I'm just someone who's making some changes and I'm collaborating on this Terraform. And let's say I'm like, oh, I just wanna move this database to the public subnet, right? Now, what do you think happens when I try to move the database to a public subnet? it destroys the instance. Do we want to destroy a database? Well, some people do. Some people do, you know, we're all like mini chaos engineers in here, right? But uh, we're going to not destroy that. So what happens is that, let's say I push it up. Now Terraform has an internal um, command that you can do that says don't delete or prevent destroy. Uh, but the problem is sometimes you do actually want to destroy these things and it's not that clear, right? So what you might do is you might run a make contract, which I've done, I'm gonna do right now. And what it will do is generate the plan. It will say there's a planned change to recreate the database. And guess what? My test fails. Hmm, what happened? Well, if I look at my actual contract test, I put AWS instance database under do not delete, right? So if I were to pipeline this and I had unit contract, my contract stage would fail because it's saying, by the way, you violated a contract of that deleted instance, right? Because I said, don't delete it. All right, so that's a really fun, fun thing to do. Uh, but what we're going to do now is actually revert the database because we're not going to do any changes to it. All right, so next piece. Integration testing. Okay, integration testing is difficult to define. It confirms two interactions between two plus components, at least that's how I like to think about it. 
it tends to require some real resources. So you can't really do integration testing uh, without having some kind of resources available. That just doesn't work, right? Um, you might also kind of lump acceptance tests, so things like, hey, this thing works, great, I accept it, deploy, release, push to production, et cetera. So it might also include that kind of stuff in there too. But here's the important thing that I want everybody to remember. Integration tests are about interactions. If you're using an IAC, an infrastructure's code tool, testing the deployment is a little redundant, right? So if you're testing and saying, did I create the EC2 instance? Well, yeah, because it's declarative. So it's going to have created it up there. Um, in Terraform, these are covered by the provider acceptance test. So even if you're using AWS, Azure, uh, you know, Ali Cloud, any of the above, they're going to be covered by provider acceptance tests that will have already tested that the deployment has been successful, right? Uh, the integration tests that you want to be writing focus deeply on interactions between components. There are lots of integration tests, including functional, the policy sort, and security. Open policy agent, for example, which we've been kind of, the language we've been using right now is supposed to be a policy agent that kind of shows this. Uh, so that's why the language functionally looks like denies and you know, all sorts of things. But the idea is that we're going to work on an integration test, a very specific integration test, meaning it will interact with about two, three components. So my goal, did I connect public subnet to private subnet correctly? I don't know. I don't actually know. I just ran Terraform and applied it, and you know, how do I know? Uh, so did I actually do it correctly? Did I actually narrow down the security group to 27017, or can everything pass? I don't know. So let's actually do an integration test. Um, and so there are a couple of more specific tools that I, I post up here. By the way, you don't have to take the picture of the slide because there's an end slide that has it all aggregated. So that way, you know, easier for everybody. But I list them here for talking points. Um, there's TerraTest, which a number of people use. Um, and if you're using things that are not Terraform, you can do AWS local stack or a mocking framework for your public cloud or infrastructure. I say use it with caution because sometimes the APIs are not updated, so be careful. Uh, Kubernetes local environments are great for doing integration testing, and there are various inspect resource packs as well that you can use. So there are a lot of tools out there for this. Now, uh, I would run this, except it does take some time, but we can try it and we'll see how it goes. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and we're going to run some integration tests. And all the integration tests do is spin up a kitchen EC2 instance in the public subnet and connect to the private one. Sounds really simple. So I'm going to just write make integration, which does the Terraform YOLO uh, or Terraform apply, and we'll see what happens, right? So here, I've already written the test to basically accomplish this. Uh, and so this looks a little bit like this. Basically, all I'm doing is database check routing from public to private subnet. Look, that test is really well uh, described, right? So here I'm saying, DB host IP, connect through port 27017, it should be reachable, should be resolvable. Now, that seems really simple, and that's really all we're doing. Uh, similarly, I don't want anything on port 80, which meant I opened up everything. Not great. You could do this with policy, too, uh, but this is nice for an integration standpoint, just to make sure it's a sanity check. So it shouldn't be reachable, because I only opened it for 27017. And also, I'm just throwing in an outbound check here. That's all. So you notice that this EC2 instance is sitting here and it's ready and it's gonna spin up. It takes some time to do it. But if you actually watch this go, uh, which I don't have time to actually completely watch this go, you'll actually see that it continues waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So that means it fails, right? It didn't get to SSH. So does anybody know why it didn't get to SSH or why I couldn't SSH from my kitchen instance into even my kitchen instance in my public subnet? So me, I forgot something. I forgot a gateway. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, this is great. I wrote my architecture diagram and I like did TDD to this architecture diagram. And then I forgot the gateway that allows you to access from external to the kitchen instance, right? Which is interesting because it did do what it was supposed to do. It caught something I missed. It caught, it was an integration test that actually caught something that I didn't do and should do in order for my network to functionally work. So. Gateway router, had to include that. So what I ended up doing was going back, scrounging some documents, 
Uh, and I ended up finding a, my lovely gateway, uh, which I have commented out because uh, it's easier to do that because it's about three components. So it's about three components for this gateway. Um, and what you do is, well, in here, I'm just gonna uncomment it. And I also added, just for completion's sake, a gateway unit test. And so what these will do is actually check for unit test. It will check whether or not the gateways actually exist, right? And so then I don't have to wait to my integration st test stage to determine that I've done something wrong if let's say a team member came in and didn't know any better and somehow checked it in, right? And didn't actually check in a gateway, for example. Um, the idea is here, I'm able to catch it earlier. Now I know, I have that idea in my head. Uh, it takes again some time to run, so I'm going to actually go back to the slides and show you the passing output but the passing output of kitchen test, right, of that instance running in the public subnet, connecting back to the private subnet, says everything is good. So it connects on the port that it should, it connects, it doesn't connect on the port that it shouldn't connect on, and it also has outbound routing, so that means that it can connect and grab packages, for example. So overall, not so bad. So, you know, integration testing is kind of powerful, right? You're saying I'm isolating certain subsets of my infrastructure and selectively choosing what works, what doesn't, and validating the interactions. Uh, it converts the theory to reality a little bit more. This is when you're like, oh, I get it. When you Terraform apply, that's when I feel confident that it works, right? Um, it caught a missing component, which I'm pretty happy about because I forgot it. Uh, it, iso it also isolates certain sections of the system, so you don't always have to spin up everything to test it. You could just spin up subsets, right? Uh, the only downside to the integration testing is uh, it's just not that fast, right? You, I'm still standing here and Kitchen is still running. So uh, it's not that fast and it requires real resources, which isn't always a luxury that everybody has. So uh, there are some good things and some not so great things. All right, so we're at the last section, which is end-to-end -end testing. And I ask you to do this yourself because we don't have time to run an end-to-end -end test. But end-to-end -end tests are the real deal. So if you're running an end-to-end -end test, the idea is that you're saying, does this actually work the way that I actually truly and deeply think that it should work? Uh, it can be manual, it could be fully automated, or it could be smoke testing. Uh, the whole point about smoke tests, which I love from a QA engineer that I used to work with, was like if you plug it in and it smokes, then you know it's not good. So you should just back it out. Uh, so yeah, that was the end-to-end -end test that you kind of want to look at in infrastructure. I favor a lot of smoke tests in infrastructure just because it takes so long sometimes to run end-to-end -end tests. We used to write end-to-end -end tests for cluster autoscaler to make sure we actually deployed it correctly in Kubernetes, and that took like three hours. So anyway, if you decide to TDD it, I would say start with this architecture, start with whatever the repository has, and the challenge is can you write an end-to-end -end test that connects to an application and goes uh, to a database, grabs the payload, and returns it back? That's the question, right? Um, if you can do that, then that end-to-end -end test is sufficient, and it says, okay, it works the way I expect it to. Is it secure? Not sure. You know, that's a negative path you'll have to test. So the idea is that your end-to-end -end test would cover a lot of things. If you're curious about tools that facilitate this, um, Terraform specific ones are like TerraTest, you can repurpose as well for end-to-end -end testing. Now TerraTest spins up resources and it triggers end-to-end -end tests, but you still have to write the end-to-end -end tests. So you don't get out of that one. Um, if you're more concerned about Policy Sentinel, uh, which is not open source, but it's part of the Terraform suite of tools, uh, Sentinel is uh, available as well. Um, and if you're doing other infrastructure, there are plenty of behavior-driven development frameworks out there that help you do this. Uh, to say like given when then, so when a user does this, then you know, this should happen. There are also native testing frameworks um, available that you can use. So you can still use Golang and GoTest and still do all of this stuff too. You just have to write the code. And in Kubernetes, there are a lot of different things that will help you understand your cluster. Um, I like the Sonobuoy conformance tests, uh, shout out to them, because it made it really easy for me to say, okay, cluster's good, check, you know, let's move on. Um, and you can also use the local environments as well, but again, it's a little bit like a mock. You don't fully know if it works or not. So those are the sets of tools there for end-to-end -end testing. All right, final thoughts. We're going, oh my gosh, this like took so much effort, right? Can you imagine doing this across a team and like having everybody be like, ah, oh, GDD, and they're like, unit testing is so useless here because I could just declare something in Terraform and then it goes somewhere and it's great and like I could just run Terraform apply and, Terra you know, and it would just tell me what to do. Uh, or the other response that I tend to get is, I don't find testing tools for this. Um, 
Yeah, that's true, sorry. There's sometimes just not testing tools, so you have to write a bit of code to get it to, to, to work. Uh, and then the other one I get is stop with pedantic practices, hence why the quote, TDD is dead at the beginning. Um, that was five years ago, right? Uh, and yeah, TDD has come, become a little bit of a pedantic practice to a certain degree. Um, so I refine the statement here, preaching TDD is dead. I don't preach TDD, I just say that it's a way that you can uh, kind of facilitate the death of YOLO-driven development, right? Um, so when you do TDD, the idea is that you're no longer getting in this mindset of, oh, I don't know, I'll just push it, cool. Uh, so stop with the YOLO-driven development and keep, you know, keep thinking about the ways that you would infrastructure test. And TDD is a way to frame it. It's really a learning tool. At the end of the day, infrastructure as code is weirdly hard. Infrastructure is very domain specific. So how do you gain confidence in infrastructure and even infrastructure as code if you've never really learned public cloud terminology or your load balancer has been configured by someone else? You, you don't really know. So the idea is you develop this knowledge of infrastructure with TDD, right? Someone who might have a little bit more knowledge and who can help you understand, here's a test. Let's get this passing. Let's understand what's going on under the hood. So it forces you to look under the hood at some of the things that you might be doing in your infrastructure configuration. You kind of build more useful integration and end-to-end -end tests, mostly because you start thinking about what's actually important to test, right? So you actually think about what's actually truly valuable for you as someone who's managing your infrastructure, rather than saying, oh, I'm just gonna like run some, a whole bunch of tests that may or may not actually be very useful for me or the team that you have. And I think what I learned whenever I started to apply TDD to learning infrastructure was actually, I kind of developed this tacit knowledge of a change blast radius. So tacit knowledge is the idea that if I, told, if I gave you an index card and you tried to write down every step to tell someone how to ride a bicycle, you may not be able to actually describe the steps, right? Because you've just kind of built it into you. So tacit knowledge in the incident response space, in SRE, in any space in production, right? is not that easy to acquire, it comes with experience. So when you start to understand the pieces of your infrastructure, how they interact with each other, how changes affect upstream, you start to build more experience of your changes blast radius. You start to understand the impact, you start to understand why things interact the way they do. So, you know, eventually, YOLO-driven development and test-driven development of infrastructure are gonna be dead to you, right? Eventually you'll graduate from this, right? I don't do TDD all the time anymore but that's because I've developed a little bit more knowledge on how these things interact. And eventually they might be dead to you. But you know, for someone else who's trying to learn, it could be a useful tool. So if you wanna learn more, I have a whole thing of like slides on there. It has the slides and the demo repository. Um, so if you actually look at that, the demo repository also has a huge list of resources on there that I've compiled. Um, please rate the session. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you ever wanna get in touch, just feel free. My contact's up here, thanks.